Hi Bike TV, it's Clarence behind this mask and um, we're at the Multnomah County Bike Fair and this is the wrap up to Pedalpalooza which lasted pretty much the month of June and we are going to be visiting a lot of the booths here who are filled with bike groups and bike people and people who love bicycles and maybe have a little bike fetish as well and we're going to talk to them about their groups and what they're doing here and also as you can see I'm wearing this really strange garb I've been appointed a judge. I'm not exactly 100% sure what a judge does. Uh, I've got all kinds of fun things on and I'm going to just kind of go with the flow and I think I'm supposed to curse at people and, and ridicule them in fun and humorous ways. So let's go on in and check out what's going on. You gotta get to people who know the people. We're getting ready to judge the slow bike race. I don't know why we need judges for that. But Lula. Someone might put their foot down. Yeah. Put their foot back up and pretend like they didn't know. Oh, look. And look at our judge. Judge Dan. Dan, say hi to my team. Judge Mortimer. I mean, Judge Mortimer. Do you commute on this sucker? Every day it's like a horse. You can herd traffic on these things. Wow. Yeehaw! This is the happiest day of my life. Uh, the first Multnomah County Bike Fair, they did marry your bike. And and I had just met my bike then, and I we weren't you know I wasn't ready to make a commitment, but we've been together for two years now. We've we've meant a lot to each other. We've spent almost every day together. What do you think about getting married to Timo? <laughs> And how do you feel about representing here? I feel so honored. It's, I'm, I can't, it's just a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. And yourself? I feel very honored. I'm so proud of my best friend Timo getting married today. The musician, what are you going to play for us? Uh, I think it's called the wedding song. Here comes the bride. <laughs> oh, look! <laughs> Hi, Timo. Take you, Trekkie. To be my bike. To be my bike. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. And now announce you, person and bike. Can you tie that on the bike? Can you tie that on the bike? Somewhere, yeah. And the best man has the ring. You may kiss the bride, the bike. <laughs> oh, I gotta see this. <laughs> Please, a little decorum here. Yeah. your secret for getting that cap? Well, I figured my heart, which is the most important part of Pedal Palooza, was on my left side. And since it was heavy and laden with blood, I set it off to one side to counterbalance my chicken leg, which was keeping me on the other side. So you had no idea you would be picking up a Gatorade cap? Well, you know, I actually grew up picking up Gatorade caps. Brother used to drink a lot of Gatorade and flick them at me. It looks like you picked something else up while you're riding. Oh, what's going on? Very nice. Yeah. Well, if, if that's the prize, then it, you've done a good job. Well, thank you very much. And have a nice time. I will. I'm here all the way from Brooklyn. I came here just to judge and let you all you people know. Thug life. Yeah, Brooklyn. Yo, folks, it's time to get down and get funky. All the judges are getting down in the middle, and I want to see some people standing and dancing. Let's go.
my friend Carrie Bai, and she makes wonderful t-shirts. I'm a printmaker, and I make woodcut designs, and this design, Bunny in the Bike, I actually made before I was bikey. And in fact, Bunny the Bike led me to this whole bikey world. People said you should do a ride, and then I did the first annual Bunny in the Bike ride. And it was a huge success. What's bikey? What's bikey? Yeah. <laughs> That's a word that our East Coast people are probably not very familiar with. Well, you can't say you're a biker because then you drive a motorcycle. Bikey's kind of more your cool, easy, fun. You like to bike for fun. You commute for fun. It's a word to describe this whole bike culture that comes together on a day like this. Or... This is bikey. What's going on here? <laughs> So what if somebody wants to get a hold of you to purchase some of your artwork? What were, um, were I have a website. It's uh, redbatpress.com. <laughs> Sprockets in Portland at the partial sprockets. The partial. Par there's no, not all, not all the not all sprockets are here. And uh, we just watched your performance, and it was just wonderful, fabulous. And wondering, you know, what 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 was your inspiration? We were a bunch of friends that wanted to get together to the dance trail, and so we did it. Basically, you know, we all formed bands, we all picked songs. And, uh, it's a completely DIY operation, um, and as we've grown, we've started to work more and more with four uh, political causes, whether that's bike advocacy or um, actual governmental politics against the Bush administration, and basically, of course, advocating women, um, their sexuality, sensuality, and the celebration of their bodies. So how long have you all been doing this for? One, one year, year today. Exactly one year, one year, one year, one year, one year today. So today. last year you performed this year? Yes. yes. And how much uh, practice? Weekly. We practice once a week or hours. there's a show coming. Yeah. Yeah. Two hours a week and then otherwise as often as possible. It seems some of it's pretty intricate. Like, do you ever have any accidents or anything with the bikes? Or anything? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah all the time. Things happen all the time. Oh, I guess they do. Every performance is, is different. Did this no, happen? This is not, not a sprocket. Oh, not a sprocket. <laughs> so what are your uh, aspirations? What do you guys see the group doing? Um, I Touring nationwide someday, maybe? If first somebody if wants to pay us to do it, we'd be Fuck happy yeah. to. S-P-R-O-C-K-E-T-T-E! Yes! S-P-R-O-C-K-E-T-T-E! We're the Sprockets and we rock it every day on our bikes! We're the Sprockets and we rock it in the streets at night! I said S-P-R-O-C-K-E-T-T-E! I'm here with Todd Boulanger, who's a board member of Bike Station. Nice to have you. Thank you for uh, giving us a personal tour. We're in Seattle. And as you may know, in New York City, we have lots of problems 
to bike theft and uh, places to park your bike safely. And Bike Station would alleviate some of these problems. So we're gonna go through and check it out, see what kind of amenities they are offering cyclists. So let's go inside. Bike Station basically is a nonprofit organization that focuses on improving bicycle parking and access to public transit. The bike stations hold from about 75 bikes to 150 bikes, depending on the facility. Bike Station has after hours 24-7 keyed entry access into um, three of our five parking facilities. Typically you'd have a fob, keychain fob, but in Seattle we're able to use our flex car key card in addition to using car sharing cars it also allows us entry into the bike station. You put it over the proximity sensor when the shop is closed the door opens and then you would be allowed to enter and park your bike. And the bike station through its um, car to access entry system allows 24 7 uh, access for members and it's basically a privilege of membership when you pay your annual fee or um, you pay your one dollar per park you gain the ability to access the system at night and at night if you can visualize this garage door it is coming has come down and it's at rest and basically it closes off the shop closes off the library and the accessories from the parking function so we're going to park my bike up here okay so we're going to Pull this out, push it all the way down and push it hard when you get at the base of it. Like that. And it'll set. Okay. okay. And then you just have to roll it straight up your ramp. Now yep. we're going to take the bike and we're going to put the front wheel first and it's going to lock right in. Yeah, you will basically, as you roll it up, the rear locks into those clamps, those claws, and what happens. Release the handbrake. Handbrake. And it goes up. And I'm parked. <laughs> the bike station also provides uh, additional services for um, bicycles. A bicycle shop, as you see behind us, um, retail accessories, bike rental for visitors. Since this is a full service shop, you can drop your bike off in the rack and Joe could fix it during office hours. So you come in, you need a new tire, you pick out the tire, you leave the bike here, you give Joe a call, he's not in and it gets fixed during your office hours. It's ready for you to pick up. We do quite a bit of, of repair here. We're usually doing you know three to four tune-ups a day, plus your standard flats and cable adjustments and stuff like that. As far as the members that are here that are, uh, um, that are full members, I know them all by name. Um, a lot of them actually have keys that are left in my uh, key box, so they can call in later in the day and say, I need something done to my bike. Can you go ahead and do it? I know which bike is theirs. I do run with a, a group of lawyers that are down here that have their own team. So I'm usually doing their bikes on Thursdays and Fridays, getting them ready for races on the weekends. We get a mix um, of your standard, you know, you know, easy going rider to your racer still down here. So it's a full facility shop that works out pretty well. Any city that looks at a bike station, having more than one facility is, is the way to go. Um, you have your primary mother, mother station or mothership bike station, and then you might have uh, satellite stations. Um, bike station is, I would say, ideal for New York City. You've got many shop fronts like this, you have many transit facilities, you could have a bike station basically at every ferry departure, you could have uh, a bike station at PATH. To work with something like New York would be great with the subway systems. I mean, that's what we work with out of California, is we work with BART. You could have one at Herald Square, you could have one at Battery Park, um, maybe a Central Park facility. Uh, later on might be bike rentals, bike servicing, more of the, the, the recreational trade. It's a great usage for travelers. Uh, people on the train who want to actually stop and see Seattle, they'll use it. They'll drop their bike off here and go about their business for the day. Um, the majority of people that have bike walkers in their facility um, but feel that this is a safer establishment. And it's been great for the baseball games. Uh, people ride their bikes down here at 7 o'clock, want to go to a baseball game, don't have to deal with the traffic, the lag of trying to get home. So they'll park, go to the game, come back, and their bike is ready to go when they take off. So overall, from what I've seen, I think it's a great idea. So now that we've done the business part of our trip to Seattle, now we're going to do the pleasure part. And we're going to go out to Alki Island. And what are we going to do out there? going out to Alki on the Elliott Bay uh, water taxi to see a phenomenal new uh, bike and pedestrian facility. 
city of Seattle has taken basically one lane of traffic space back for pedestrians and cyclists. They've shunted parking out one lane into the street and they've created a bikeway. So we're going to Alki Beach right now. Um, we're going to be docking at Seacrest Park. And it's pretty exciting because there's a lot of things to see. Um, let me tell you a little bit about some of those things. On our way, we're going to be seeing one of the most remarkable views of the Seattle skyline. We're also going to be able to go down by Alki Beach, which is known to have some sparkly sand. So watch out. We'll see how many bikers we that are out there. Um, right now, we're the only we're the only cyclists using the water taxi, but um, we'll see who else is out on uh, on the beach. Anything else exciting we should know about? Um, there's an opportunity to bask in sun, which is one of the things that they list here on the uh, <laughs> on the mini vacation travel tips. Cars, more bikes! It used to be a, uh, a four lane wide street with parking on both sides. Now we have two lanes of traffic and parking on both sides still, but an additional uh, 20 foot wide esplanade for bicycle and other uh, non motorized vehicle traffic. And then we've maintained the uh, pedestrian uh, trail or sidewalk along here, thus re reducing the uh, bike to pedestrian conflict that is so prevalent along many of our well-loved and overused trails. You know, I came all the way to the West Coast and just sometimes you can't get away from New York symbols. The Alkali Liberty statue crown, don't be fooled, it's not the real thing. I've never been to New York City. This is what it looks like. <laughs> I pictured it though. bigger. I say in New York, you can't go visit the torch anymore, but here in Seattle, <laughs> Jesus. Oh. oh my gosh. <laughs> oh Jesus. I can't believe it. <laughs> Hello, Staten Island. Okay, so our pleasure is over. We're done visiting the Alki Peninsula. And Bike TV is going home. We're gonna go back on the train. We're gonna load up our bikes. And we're going to go to Portland on the Amtrak. And so we're all signing off. Angela, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, Bike TV. And Todd, thank you for leading us on a lovely trip. It was a great trip. Thank you, Bike TV. Thank you, Bike TV. Well, I got a couple of planters here to keep cars from turning around in my driveway. I don't use my driveway the standard way, of course. Well, you know, you're sitting in your front yard, you're doing a little picking blueberries or something, and these cars are all like, they come and they drive in and they pull all the way into your driveway, basically right next to where you're sitting there picking blueberries. Oh, they're just turning around. Not in my driveway, you're not. So, the planters have blocked the cars from turning around in the driveway keeping my property car free. Hey, Bike TV here in Portland, and we are here with Sean Grant, and we're going to go on a tour today. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Okay, the tour that we're going on is called the Eastside Theater History Bicycle Tour, and basically we're going to be going around the east side of Portland, northeast and southeast quadrants, and looking at some nice old theaters that were built between the 1910s to 30s. Wow, and this is really cool for me because this is combining two of my favorite things filmmaking and bicycling and I was wondering what was the inspiration for this tour well um, in my day-to-day -day travels I'd always pass by a lot of these uh, old theaters and there's a lot of them in Portland for some reason it's not um, it's sort of unusual to have so many in such a small area and uh, I thought it would be really great to find a little bit more about the history of the theaters that are still here and why don't you also just tell us about Urban Adventure League well, the Urban Adventure League is basically a loosely based organization that's a club without uh, leaders or, well, members. There's plenty of members, but no leaders and no dues or no meetings. It's just all about exploring the city, getting to know your cities and like urban landscapes better through um, alternative means of transportation, uh, bicycles, walking, buses. 
um, having fun in your city and, and learning something from it and also giving back at the same time, if that didn't sound too heavy. To the movie. Do you have a favorite movie? You know, I just saw Seven Samurai after having seen Magnificent Seven uh, a few months ago. So now I know where it all began. Young Frankenstein, maybe. That was a good movie. <laughs> I'd have to say Pee Wee's Big Adventure is right there, pretty near the top. Oh, how about the Maltese Falcon? Very nice. Yeah, that is a classic. So here we are in front of the Clinton Street Theater. Um, it's a very historic theater. It opened in 1915. Its claim is oldest continuously running active theater west of the Mississippi River. Many of the theaters in that period of time were vaudeville houses, which meant not only did they show movies, but it was also, you know, song and dance routines, comedians, ventriloquists, all little like shows. So what are some films you might enjoy? Uh, lately I've been a big Wes Anderson fan. Bottle Rocket's a classic, and what else? Royal Tenenbaum, this is good fun. The first one I saw at a pub theater that I just loved was um, City of Lost Children. I think most people in Portland that spend any time in Portland know of the Baghdad Theater. It was built in 1927 uh, by Universal Pictures during the era when like the film studios actually built theaters too to you know show their movies. There's two really significant um, premieres that happened here. Um, in 1975, the Oregon premiere of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and all the other big movie, Gus Van Sant, My Own Private Idaho, was was premiered here. In '91, the McMenamins bought the um, bought it and turned it into what we see today. And the uh, McMenamin Brothers basically own a lot of brew pubs and also like theater type stuff around town. They're, their whole shtick is basically finding old stuff and renovating it and, you know, turning it into something, you know, bringing back its own old glory at the same time, making it into sort of a, you know, place to drink and watch cheap, cheap you know, second-run movies. Favorite nostalgic movie is Clue, because my brother and sister and I watch it. watched it about 2,000 times when I was a kid. It was built in 1923, and at the time, it was the first Deco design theater, Deco style art Deco, to be in Portland and maybe even the Pacific Northwest. I'm not exactly sure, and it's one of the remaining ones to be in that style too. But yeah, it was built in 23, so it's going you know a little over 80 right now. Favorite guilty pleasure? Uh, I have not prepared. I got mine is Xanadu, and that evoked a lot of groans. Yes, it did. <laughs> And I have to say, Master Pussycat, Kill Kill. I do like Dr. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Look, somebody brought out popcorn. Yeah. Look, oh, yeah. Everybody take a hit. Popcorn's a guilty pleasure. That is a guilty pleasure. Would you happen to have a guilty pleasure for us? Barbarella. <laughs> Deep in my soul, I know that I like She's Having a Baby. Classic 1980s Kevin Bacon movie. <laughs> I actually saw Logan's Run twice in one night. <laughs> <laughs> theater was 1,500 seats, you know, it was a very big theater. Um, one of the most ornate movie palaces in the Pacific Northwest, as you can see, the whole facade up there, I mean, that's pretty much, that's a lot of detail. I mean, they don't do that like they used to anymore. Probably like uh, Mean Girls. Ooh. And I thought of that. Just now. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Lohan is a mean girl. Yeah, she was, she, she got me. And like the Euro trash bowing to you. And that's a good thing. <laughs> well, that's the question. Delicious. Guess what? 
it's all from biking. I love bike TV. It's the best show on TV. This okay. is Clarence at <laughs> the bike show. Okay. And I'm here with Clarence. Who's your favorite cyclist? You. <laughs> but of course. This is the official auto free kitty, and he was found by an anonymous hero around the Brooklyn Navy Yards. Stop that! Mr. Safety is not fooled by the media. 